Whoa, there's Eleanor. Oh, wow. A lot has changed. Look at that. Smooth roof. Oh, man. Beautiful louver deck lid. Kind of glowing a mint green color from the light getting some paint on them. <laughs> Wowee. Hey you guys, welcome back to Duckman Cycles MVW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> and I'm back today to talk about my 1956 Beetle, also known as Eleanor. And you guys, you need to go over to Earl's channel and subscribe, because people keep asking me for updates, and well, I don't really have the updates. I'm not doing the work on the car. I see the same updates that you do. Now, Earl and I do have regular conversations, but when I actually get to see the car visually is in his videos. So please check him out, duckshit.net forward slash ccc. That will get you to his channel, subscribe. But otherwise, because you guys keep asking, I drove all the way out to Earl's place and uh, decided to visit Eleanor myself and make a video. So here it is. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to licky like it, comment, subscribe. We'll be back right after the intro. All right, classic car creations. Here we are, we made it. All right, here it is. Classic car creations. Shaky, shaky, shaky. Classic Car Creations, and sitting here between us is... Eleanor. It's Eleanor, my 1956 Chop Top Beetle, which Earl here has been working on so meticulously, working down to the final detail on this car. Now, Earl, um, what is it that you're working on right this second? What you got? Uh, right now, we're working on the doors. The doors, which are? Yeah. Right here? Back down the metal. Now, uh -huh. a couple months ago, we did one coat of green just to make sure nothing happened after sandblast, and we had it all prepped down the metals prep. Now we're down to the point where we're leveling it, so we're doing dolly and hammering, getting all the whoop de doos out as much as we can, and then we're going to put a light coat of Kevlar, and I want to touch the panel, of course, and then after that, we're going to do a light skim coat of platinum all the way across and get out from underneath it. It doesn't need a lot, but we're just going to put enough in to get rid of the transitions within the panel. Excellent. Yeah. Getting it nice and flat back to the factory yeah. parameters of that That's shape. Right. Pretty much where we're at. Yeah. Okay. And there's one here behind me too. This one was a little different from the other. This one here was a real pain in the neck because it had a nasty hit down in here. Uh huh. And it was actually a series of hits. We were able to get most of it out. And then what I wanted to do, because when you dolly and hammer, you're actually almost starting to stretch the metal and the mm -hmm. metal gets soft. So what we did was we tightened it up with a pick, got it to form, and then we filled the voids just a little bit with a fiber tech. Uh, it's, it's just basically fiber tech filler. It's really good as Kevlar reinforced, so it'll put a structure in it. And it'll make it strong. And then after we're done sanding this back, you'll only see maybe a sliver here or here. It's not a lot. It'll go back to mostly metal, and then we're able to put the skin coat of uh, uh, platinum on it, and then block it out, we're done. Now tell us what happens to the metal if it did stretch, if you didn't do it the way you're going to do it. You really got to find a way to shrink it back, and it's not an easy technique to do. A lot of it's lost art. I've done it with some success, but I mostly try to get it to where there's a point where you're good. And if you keep going, you don't want to get oil candy. If it does, you're not going to get it back, especially some of the old 50s sheet metal we've mm -hmm. done in the past. It doesn't play very nice. So the guys back in the days of doing body work, but they didn't have the privilege of having this stuff, um, they really were better than what we are today. Now tell us what the oil canning effect is for those the that are watching. stretching of the metal of a flat panel. If you had a dent in it, you stretch that metal in there, and when you beat it back, it flimsies the panel. So let's say if you're waxing it, what might happen? Uh, if you have a, uh, uh, like this has nothing reinforcing the back. There's no beam in the door or mm -hmm. nothing. It's just a shell. And if you have this just metal and you don't have it reinforced or anything, you can, when you're waxing, it'll go boop, boop, it'll foil can. It'll actually because, pop in and out just yeah, like the bottom of an oil the can. The tension of the metal in the shape is lost. It's not, it's weakened from over time. It happens a lot on the old cars with the hoods. So the hoods are notorious for doing that. 
not on VW so much, but you know where I'm going. The very common problem on the roof of a Beetle, however. If anybody ever had a roof rack and put some yeah. junk up there and dented the roof yeah. and then tried to pound it back out from the inside, and you get that elevator. nice yeah. soft were, spot. Yeah, elevator had an area between the <laughs> Just <slime>. like a <laughs> baby's head. <Yeah. laughs> Eleanor has a strip in here because she's lengthened in the roof. Right, and that right. area, we had an oil can forward. Right up there. I was able to bring area. that up, and then I worked to the highest point. So if you notice on this, this was done back over Chris, um, Christmas and New Year's when I did this. There's like, um, oh gosh, I don't know how many hours we have in this leveling, but she's perfectly level now. But yeah, it had an oil can back there. And what you do is you pick it out, and what you do is you're actually taking the stretch out by putting little bit of indentations in that metal and it tightens the metal back up. And it's not a lot. You only need a little bit and that's how we we're able to be successful there. But yeah, we worked to all the high points and you get very minimal. Excellent. I mean, the overall shape of that roof it's correct. It, it means everything to a beetle. And I've said yeah. this on my channel before that this shape, if you lose this slope, it starts to look like a squashed beetle, like somebody stepped on it. And that was never the goal with this car. I always wanted to have that original hoop in the roof so that way it looked like it came from factory that way. And that was really the goal behind this, that it looked like it was a factory coach built. It was something special that Volkswagen made in a very, very limited production. I wanted to keep everything looking just like it came from 1956. I didn't want to look like somebody hacked it up in their backyard with pine needles. I wonder who that was. <laughs> But uh, that was the goal behind this one, and I knew I couldn't finish the car myself, which is why it went off to Classic Car Creations to be done the right way. When, when we started this project together, and I came to visit you, oh gosh, it's been a year now. Yeah, actually, we, uh, more than a year, hasn't yeah. it? No, I guess it was June. It was June. Yeah, it was June. It was June. It was June. I brought it to you yeah. the first week of August. Yeah, it was June. Yeah, because yeah, we yeah, drove so, up at that time. We right. saw you. We saw the car. Oh, it was so hot that day. It's and like raining. Today. It's, well, it's 95 in here right oh, now. Oh, but we it was raining too in oh, Pensacola. Yeah. It was yeah. awful. Yeah. It was just <laughs> to rain when Eleanor comes out. That's why Eleanor's been staying indoors. Mother Nature's not trying to pull any fast ones That's on right. me when, when I moved her. Right. Hurricane I, Ivan got her the first time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> last year we were very lucky. Uh, that was a scary moment when we, we had that hurricane sitting over the Bahamas. That oh, was, man. Uh, that was not fun. Um, a lot of people took that one for granted, but that was not something you want to take for granted. I tried to update my insurance policy when that thing was spinning and coming towards us too, and the insurance company didn't want to touch me. Yeah. They said, we got this entire state locked down right now on policies, yeah, so whatever you got, you got. I said, all right, well, it's a good thing I got good coverage already. <laughs> yeah, you want, you want good coverage on your car when you get it to a shop. That way you're not out anything, because these cars cost so much to restore. It's, it, it just takes so much material costs and everything, and people got a print out for me of what we're paying out to our jobber. It's... It's stupid. But just to be honest, when it comes to this car too, because it's so unique, yeah. this would be something that would be really, really difficult to reproduce. Because there's nothing else it's out there like it. None. Yeah, yeah it's, this, it's, is, this is one of none, is what you said. Yeah, I never heard that statement before. Well, one, one of none. It, I like no that. No one's got a special <laughs> chop like this on a '56 that's put together from several cars. Right. This car was never meant to live again. People don't get this when people go on the channel and they see the videos of us working on her. This was not a car that was not going to live again if Len didn't build it. You have to build it with ambition and a vision to do it. And the vision that I picked up on since I watched the car from when you were in your driveway doing the assessment video, I, you know, you pick up what you're following and you learn it and you're like, wow, well, it's not hard to build. You know, you can just work the areas. You That's get it. The best you can, man. I had a goal and I pushed through it the best I can. I learned a lot along the way. You'll never stop learning the day you stop learning or the day you feel overconfident in yourself and you become, oh, I'm the best. That's when you really need to get out of it because then you're full of yourself. In this business, there's not, there's, it's like we did a video recently of a uh, guy brought in, the client brought in a paint stripper. We've never used it. We've been using the old school paint stripper for years. He found something that's environmentally friendly and non-toxic and it worked. Since That's fantastic for us. So we learned something new. When we, when we have our jobber bring us a new product and says, hey, this might be better, we're very open-minded. We learn, we try it, and it works, and we use it. Yeah, I'm uh, very, very impressed with what we put together here. I mean, I'm very happy with, with everything as it's been happening. I know you told me there's been some little problem areas, but they've been exactly that. Little problem areas. It's nothing that we didn't know going into the car to begin with. And None of this is new. It sounds like I'm, if I'm personally making a big deal, I, I shouldn't be, but it's just because I'm what I'm working on and I'm taking the hours and putting the energy in, I want to make sure I get it right. And they do, 
all cars fight in certain areas. Certain areas that you think that were going to be a nightmare actually go quicker and easier. Uh, and then there's certain areas that just want to nag to the end, and, you know, all cars have that. Yeah, this car is just, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm beyond words with what I'm seeing here, this progress. I never thought when I started this work that I would see this, where it's at, in this position, and with Earl in front of it doing the majority of the finish work on this, uh, well, not just the majority, you're doing all of it. Yeah. <laughs> and all of it is really what matters because you are making the car into what I wanted it to be that I could never have done myself. Also, let, to let everybody know, um, this does not have 2K primer on it. There's nothing hidden. All you're seeing is high build primer, block to a reference. Okay guys, so just to let you know, there's nothing hidden here, you're seeing everything. This is actually all metal here, metal in here. Metal references are punching through on the high build. So if you see a dark area that's showing up, that's pretty much down to the green and the metal itself. Um, what you're seeing is just bodywork at this point. There's no primer. Yeah, it's awesome. The primer is on the fenders, but the fenders are sitting off in the corner. Um, the primer, the fenders got done when we did the videos back in October. And they're just hanging out. They're, they got done. They're waiting to go home. Yeah, they've been in wait mode. Those things home. I knocked out. But uh, hit this one in the video. It does go to a stop. It will yes. not hit. No so striking in here. Not I'm even pinching my I'm, finger. I'm actually bouncing the hinges and she's not going over. Yeah, I'm so happy about that. That was the concern that I had. Because I see so much bodywork damage, even on stock beetles, right here from the thing hitting the inside. Yeah. And that that's really nice to see that it stops. And, and you didn't build it that way. That's just kind of the way it worked out, right? Yeah. It's just, I don't even know why it did. Maybe it has something to do with the roof chop. It's changing the slope and the angles. But uh, <laughs> it worked out, and I'm really glad for it. Yeah. I had a viewer ask me, it's like, why isn't this split with us? Because 56 wasn't a split with us. Yeah, I saw that in your comments yeah, this morning. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm not very rehearsed on Volkswagens. I'm rehearsed on doing body work, custom work, restoration work in general. But when it comes down to the specifics of this, I have to follow what Glenn wants on this particular build. This is his car. So that's where all the questions come from. Yeah, and you're doing it, you're doing it the way I wanted it. I mean, you're, you're doing me good on this one. And I'm, I'm so happy. I'm just overwhelmed, overwhelmed with how this, this is coming along. Coming along. Now, without harassing you too much, because the biggest question that people have, and the thing that I get from people constantly that I see every day, when they say, hey, Hey, did you get your beetle back yet? It's like kind of an annoying question because <laughs> they haven't been really paying attention to what I've been telling them. It would be about a year, we said. It would probably yeah, come back year. next summer, which is technically this summer. Yeah, I don't think summer... Now. Well, we went hot. Summer officially started this week, yeah. didn't it? Okay, we so... We hot on this car now because I have to release the video, but the 57 Chevy Dan French's car is done. So uh -huh. that just went through because we have a packing order. Everybody that comes in line goes out in the same fashion. So that's that's what we do. So Glenn's car is hot now. Now it's time to get her done. Yeah, another reason was for the uh, reasons of dieback. Yes. Dieback was a big, the very important thing. Because this needed a lot in certain areas. There's a couple areas and there's certain areas it doesn't have anything, okay? Mm -hmm. Same thing on the sides. While we did the fenders early on, the only thing we're going to be knocking out a little bit tight, uh, tight on time is actually the doors themselves because we're finally getting into them. The holdup on all of this was actually metal dressing welds and stuff and dolly and hammer stuff. And now that we're finally through that, we're able to spend the time to actually get this car in and processed. Now again, for people that don't understand what dieback is... It's the humidity changing the material. It's made with talc and it's got polyester resins in it, mm -hmm. and it just reacts with the environment. Now, is it, it also happen. is it also because of the volatile chemicals evaporating from that's it and it that's shrinking the back a little process. bit? When you shoot the primer, like this is a high build, super build four to one. That's exactly what it is. And you shoot that on there, the initial hit, transfer, die back. Is chemical release, mm -hmm. and then as it goes, it just does a little bit of changing. If I was to block it out and then body paint real fast within a week, you're going to see a lot of stuff show up. You don't want that. Let it go back for a little bit. Take your time with it. You have a better result. The the, the 57 Chevy that we have that was body work a year ago, and we had videos up on that. And that car went through paint process pretty well. The only delay was the weather because our humidity was too high and we wanted to be in a certain parameter that he's going to show the car at because all cars body work at a certain temperature, they're going to be perfect in that range because everything changes with temp and humidity. 
So that volume of the uh, filler materials and anything else that you put on there actually can shrink or expand it just does what it does. based it on yeah. its evaporation of the volatiles and then the yeah. re-soaking of the humidity. Yeah, and, and we're in central, uh, east coast of central Florida and it's flipping humidity. It is ridiculous. Yeah, here. it's hot it's, over here. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, you can tell the difference. So we usually average at night somewhere around 80% humidity in the shop. Only? And, yeah, wow. at the end of the day we can try to get it down to in the summertime about I'd say about 70, 65 percent. So we really don't have a very good window. And anything over 78 percent humidity, that's why we have a gauge in the wall, we have an issue with our clear coat. It lays differently, and then it has a chance of actually going a little bit cloudy on us. So we've got to be careful. Oh, fantastic. Well, Earl, the next question that people have been asking, the burning question, and we discussed a little bit earlier, when do you think we're going to see Eleanor back? Um, as soon as you see color. <laughs> Once it well, comes to color, there's still I more think, process after that, right? Well, you're, you're going to have a little bit of assembly, but when she goes back home, we can't put the fenders back on. We'll have the fenders on her just uh -huh. for show. Uh -huh. We're going to have to break the car back down, put the hood and the deck, uh, the deck lid and the doors will be on her. We'll just have to take her uh, fenders off. So we're going to wrap up the fenders but separately yeah, during shipment. Wrap them up, and then okay. you can reassemble her when you get her back home. Don't want them on for shipping, so they don't get banged no, up. No, because they sit fat and they, they do sit, sit low fat. and it's just an area that could be really cumbersome because the fenders are not metal. Yeah, they're not metal. They are made from fiberglass composite materials and. Uh, well, as a result, they're not as solid as anything metal would have been. I would have loved to have gotten metal fenders on here, and who no. knows, maybe sometime in the future I may do something well, with that, could, but, but no is, time soon. They've been in your stables for a long time. Yes, so yes, they have. Fitting. Plus, they're a fatter fender. Yeah. They shape the car really good. Oh, they're beautifully so shaped. You see where I'm going the the people that made you those, made that oh, they because, nailed yeah. it on those fenders. If I were going to reproduce those out of metal, I would copy the contours yeah. as exact as I could. The least part we ever body worked, actually, after we got done fixing all the cracks and spider webbing and the material was mm -hmm. actually the fenders. It was, the uh, coat was actually beautiful. Yeah, they were a little bit beat up from having been shipped and moved around yeah, for 25 years. Uh, we, it took time for us to get all that out. Now I'm just down to a block. DA re hit one time, inspect, and ready to go. It's just incredible. I have had those more than half my life. Yeah. They're ready to go. <laughs> 25 ready. years yeah. I've had these things. Yeah. I bought them when I was still a teenager yeah, so. for my 69 Beetle that when I had you at have the time. something that long, it almost becomes like a sentimental thing. So you put it onto your car, which is your baby. It just works, man. Sometimes you just do that. The other reason why is, well, it's all about the money. Those things now, if I were to buy them from some other manufacturer, even if I could figure out who they came from, I'm not sure who it is. It might have been an outfit that used to be down the other end of Florida, but they're doubled in price. Yeah. They're so much more than they used to be, probably because there's more demand for it. People are putting more Volkswagens together again than yeah. they had before. But just the inflation and everything else, the cost of those went up so much, yeah. and the cost of shipping them is ridiculous because of their size. Yeah. You've you got to put them in this, this big box. Somebody wanted to buy some fenders from me, stock fenders, and ship them off to the other end of the states, and that I, I outed myself from that. I, I removed myself. I had no interest. And we had somebody else ship it, which ended up getting lost in the post, and they got stolen. That's another story for another video. Yeah. <laughs> They're actually the fenders that originally came off Eleanor here. They were highly in demand as 1956 oval windowed fenders with bullet turn signals, which made them really special. But they're actually worth some monies, and I didn't have any interest in keeping them, so I let them go. And they got lost and stolen, and yeah, it's a whole story. Anyway, that'll be for another video. Well, Earl, so the car show that we're trying to put this car in is, uh, I think, on the third Saturday of October. That's what we're looking at. We're going to need a little assembly time before that, and realistically, you think that it might actually get done sometime before that, huh? As long as we stay healthy, we don't have any more stupid events happen in 2020. Yeah. 2020 has been a curveball. Oh, time. man. Um, and... You know, with all the shutdowns, uh, lockdowns, what happened with me, it pushed the, my business to the side, uh, so all my work shifts to the right, so that's not good. Um, but we're going to work as hard as we can just to get a good product. That's it. And Eleanor, it's up to Eleanor, basically, if she wants to get done sooner than later. Some yeah. cars want to build and some cars want to fight. And maybe this time she'll um, push the weather away. Yeah. I mean, here we go. We're going to... We're going to... Knock on wood yeah. that Eleanor repels the weather this yeah. time around. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm one We've that, had enough of that stuff. Yeah. Just enough. Yeah, with, especially like with everybody going through so much crap this year, you know. Well, yeah, between everybody... It's enough, you know, we've had enough of Right, everybody quarantining or running yeah, around the streets like nuts. Enough. and 
combination of the events. <laughs> Ridiculousness in the political environment. I mean, it's just, I don't even need to talk about it. You guys know if you're watching it. Yeah, all we want <laughs> to do know. is build cars. That's my job. That's, That's what it. That's what I'm here and, for. And the channel's dedicated for that. That's what we, we do with our channel. We want to show everybody we have a common ground as humans. We love cars. That's the main thing. We love cars, and ultimately, you know what else we love? Each other. We're taking care of each other on this project, and yeah. uh, and we're making each other smile. And you know, it might sound that's totally the, silly, that's but all of this thing, it's not a. Oh, I got all this money into it. No, do you love the car? Do you love what you have? Because that's what you really need. That's what really turns out a good product. Right. The fact that you have ambition in that project, you're enthusiastic, and, and you you you'll do whatever it takes to get that goal. If you stay focused on it, it comes to reality. As many cars that I've shot over the curb, man, you've got to have the vision. You gotta love it. Uh, and yeah, you do. If well, you don't, don't do it. If you're going in with, well, this and well, that, then don't. You've got to go in all in, or, or don't do it. At all. Well, you saw what I started out with. It was, you know, virtually nothing. There was yeah. more rust than there was metal left. And I had a vision, I had an idea, and I knew what I wanted, and I wasn't going to spend a whole lot of money, so I made what I needed, yeah. and ended up building a car, as you know, from nothing. Just nothing. I just pulled together whatever I had and whatever I could do. So I, I did the best I could with the talent that I had and learned a lot along the way. And I'm a lot better off today where I am then. And I think building Gregory the Bus is going to be a much different experience having learned so much from this one. Having learned so much from this one. Well, Earl, I'm going to thank you. We're actually right about 20 minutes in this video. So you guys want to subscribe to Classic Car Creations. Throw him a subby. Duckshit.net forward slash CCC. Hey, you never commented on it, by the way. What do you think of that? You like that? People actually go to my website with a little sub page, CCC, duckshit.net, CCC. It'll take you to Earl's, Earl's, boy, I gotta spit that out. Earl's YouTube page. It'll take you right to Earl's YouTube yeah, page. Once you get up there, you make sure you subscribe, and I think it might even automatically do that, and it'll pop up a button and say, would you like to subscribe? Yes. Make sure you do, because that's how you're gonna get the updates on this car. Now, people are still asking what color it's going to be. We have a video in the till we gotta get out. Oh yeah. For, for a contest, we want everybody to have uh, their input and whoever guesses the right color, that that's gonna be really cool. We'll give out a prize to the person who uh, guesses correctly. There's a couple we prizes actually. We want to do that for everybody, to keep everybody invigorated on our channel because we don't have a lot of amenities in the channel and we do so much editing and footage dump because what we do is kind of boring. It's kind of a boring channel. I hate to play it down, but I'm just saying body work is boring. Yeah, the, the whole And we're standing. running, we only have <laughs> one phone to record off of, and mm -hmm. we're doing all different angles of the shoot. But the thing is, when we're doing body work, we've got to keep our head in the game, so we have to put the stand up to watch what we're doing. It's boring. So I kind of get it, you know? Yeah, there's a process to everything. We don't have like interludes or other uh, content to throw in the mix to keep everybody entertained. We just focus on the cars. Well, you kind of do. I mean, you got the cats. Yeah, we, we you got the space well, space shuttle launch. Well, it wasn't a shuttle. I guess it kind of was. Not the shuttle, but it was yeah, a shuttle. Did. Oh, look what we got. He can come in we got here. Rob over here with uh, Boomer. <laughs> what you doing there, Boomer? Come to visit? You're a good boy. He just wants to do a flyby. Yeah, good boy. Yeah, he's doing a flyby. No, don't put him down. Don't put him down. There's stuff on the floor. Oh, I thought you said put him on. No, no, no. Don't. Yeah, he's he's safe there's in no, here? There's no bad work. There's nothing in here. Oh, okay. He's all right, then. Yeah, it's as long as there's DVD paint. There. <laughs> no, there's nothing in here. It's in Oh, he's room. hot. He's hot. He's well, not. He just did all that flapping from the front door to here. Yeah, he's hot. We're going to have to put him back there's out outside. anyway. And then he got sneaky and yeah. came running in here and I had to chase him. I didn't waddle around. <laughs> a little boy. Well, anyway, that's it. Don't forget to subscribe to Earl over at Classic Car Creations. We're going to go have a quick walk around the 57 Chevy because people have been asking about that a little bit, too. And, of course, I don't know anything about it. And I think from here on out, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the video. So don't forget to licky, likey, comment, subscribe. Pluck that dingle belly. That way you get updates every time I upload a video. Don't forget to check out DuckShit.net for all of my different social media links. You, too, can get a Duck Shit shirt. That's right. Duck Shit merch. And I can even make sure that Boomer shits on it, too, if you're interested in that. It costs a little extra, but we can make it happen. Anyways, you guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs> 69 GTO. Yeah, we're doing a full frame up. Full frame up? Everything going back 100% 1969. Yeah, the engine's right here. It's base coat clear. Wow. That's some color right there. Yeah, that's the factory color. Oh, is it? I was just going to ask as a snarky remark, but it actually is. Wow, I wouldn't have guessed. Unreal. The whole engine like that. Wow. Blocks, heads, everything. Yes. Wow.
I like it. That would even make a great car of color. Just the car. <laughs> yeah. Transmission's on the bench. Turbo 400's all painted. That's correct. Wow. Look at that. And then there's the manifold. Yep. You can see how we paint and tape everything up. Unfortunately for me, I didn't put any footage in. I didn't video any of it. Well, you're about to have some of it up now. Yeah. Giant radiator. Uh, that, sir? Oh, okay, yes, sir. Well, it's still a radiator, so let's... the spin comb <laughs> and then processed all the parts. Yeah. That's all got to go back together. Yeah. See, when we do the body work, we let it sit for a while. Mm-hmm. This was shot. This was done last year. This is that dieback we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, same thing on this one. See how this is done. Look here, the cowl, the roof. Uh-huh. This is body work. The way you do is let it just do what it does, and that's it. Yeah, what is this? This is the Doyce's 53, 53 Ford truck. Yep, this is the cab. This is the one we did all floors, rocker panels. We put the roof in, changed sections of the roof, fixed all the holes in the, in the firewall. Mm -hmm. we did a lot of work in this one. The back of the cab was a nightmare. And now you can see it here. This is now level. But it, does, oh, wow. it takes so much work to level it. And everything from here down is perfect. And then when we got into this area, it took so much. Wow. We got it. We got it. Yeah. Now it just needs primer. And most of that you're never going to see when the yeah, bed is no, on there. The bed covers it all up. <laughs> right. but, but it was so damaged. So much attention went in there. Well, wow. you, yeah, you, you got to do it. You got to yep. do it right. You go up there. All right. Hey. Uh, oh, is it? Wow. I'll be uh, I'll be going at 9 in the morning, 